Hi everyone, Lucas Chaffee here with Kiko Chat, September 7th free training. Uh, we like to start these off with showing people that Kiko is an interactive event. So I start off with editing the notes and letting people know that it's not just a webinar. So you say, welcome, who is here? And then you can add your name. I'll uh, just put a few bullet points for everyone and you can add your names there. And so you can immediately start getting a sense of, oh, okay, this is different. And I'm sharing my screen with you, but if you want, you can type your name back there. When I'm sharing my screen, it might be hard for you to type. So that's what happens on Zoom when the screen sharing opens. You can go to the top and click exit full screen. I'll give you an orientation to what's happening on the page. So this is a default Kiko chat event. You have a title, you've got a photo to show you which space is which. So each different space that you have on the left has a different photo. And on the right hand side, you've got a notes page and you can put a whole bunch of other tools in there. A lot of folks that came on the call today mentioned open space. So this is a good fit for when you want people to choose the topics. So let's say you were saying, all right, um, please add your topic here. And you might say 9 a.m. Uh, session one, and then people put their topics in for, for session one, 10 a.m. Session two, Eleven a.m. session three, and people can start putting their topics down. You don't have to do this now, but I'll just put in a few topics. So, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack. So maybe let's say these are the topics that people want to discuss. Uh, as the open space facilitator, you say, "All right, thanks for sharing your topics, and now we're going to put the topics in all the different rooms." Click admin controls and set topics for breakouts and just paste them in. So then now you have different topics for all the rooms and you can see how easy you can change that when it's time for 10 a.m. You just copy those topics and put them here and people can then move themselves. Everybody successfully connected to Zoom. If you can hear my voice, you were able to click join video for main room and Zoom opens. If I want to go to the lunch discussion, I go down to room two and I get a different photo and it says join video for room two. So that'll be a separate Zoom meeting. So Kiko makes it easy to jump between Zoom meetings. And you'll also notice that I'm still with you in the main room Zoom meeting, but I'm looking at room two. So you can look at a different room. And then when you decide to go into that room, you click join video. Takes about five to 10 seconds for your icon to show, but that's faster than walking out of one room and into another, <laughs> unless you run, but that could be dangerous at an in-person conference. So I'm gonna pause here to take any questions, especially in the open space context, and there's a whole bunch more to show. So the floor is open for any questions that you have this time. So my question might be very basic, but, um... It's always via Zoom. So you have to be on Zoom and work on Zoom together with the Kiko chat for the open space. If you would like another tool, there are several available. Adobe Connect, Microsoft Teams, WebEx, GoToMeeting, okay. Google Meet, and Jitsi. Yep. yep. Thanks. You're welcome. Eventually in person, you might use Kiko chat with no zoom or no video. So you could just have all your note taking happening like this with no zoom up here. No, no. But, you, but then you don't have a video. You don't see people you're talking to if you don't use another. Um... Yes, you're right. I, I, what I was saying is that in a year from now, when people are having open space in person again, and you're in the same room. Oh, okay. You could do that. Got you. Yeah. And maybe even blend the two. So people yes. who are, Exactly. Thanks.
You're very welcome. Okay, any additional questions? And we can go into more examples. Yeah, the, um, the setup, how it looks like with the main room. And so what, what preparation did you do? When I would do it, how would it look like? Is It'll this look, the standard uh, it is setup? The standard. This is exactly the standard. It started with main room and 10 breakout rooms. Now, if you want to see what it looks like to go to a different number of breakout rooms, click edit. And this is all I did to create the event. I just put in a title and a description and chose the start time, September 7th. And then I click the green button and it creates it with the butterfly photos. Now let's say you want to change this. You don't want the butterfly photos and maybe you want 25 rooms. Click customize your main space, say 25 rooms. And here were the same topics that we put in there, breakfast, lunch, dinner. But when you're creating an event, those won't, won't be visible. Then if you want to change the photos to something else, I'll choose gardens. Or you can create your own. Click helpful hints. Each section has helpful hints so that you can figure out what all your options are there. So you can create uh, something other than the gardens. And let's just take a look at that. I'll click update. And so now we see there are gardens in each room and I've got 25 breakout rooms. And each has its notes page on the right. What is the maximum of rooms? 100. And the maximum of participants per room? Zoom will allow 300 people per Zoom meeting. And Kiko Chat right now can handle an event that's, if, if you didn't give us any notice, you know, we could be ready for an event of 1,000 people today. But if you want 2,000 or 3,000 people, we haven't tested an event that large yet, but we've got the technical infrastructure for it, so. But 1,000 would work already today? Yes, it would. Okay. There, there may be a little bit of a delay when people are all jumping into, right at the beginning of your event, when everyone's coming into the main room, there, some people will see a message that says, please try again in 30 seconds. Okay. So that's, that's actually what we're working on to yep. get it up to 5,000 people. So in the next week or so. Perfect. Thank you. You can get a, a larger number of people in a Zoom room, a Zoom meeting. It can go up to 1,000. That's what we had in this event last week, 1,000 people in the main room. And that costs us an additional $90. Mm -hmm. We pay Zoom for, for mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. just let us know if you need to go above 300, please. And then okay. we, we get a Zoom Pro account and, and a large meeting add-on of either 500 or 1,000. 1,000 people or 500 people. Cost $50 and $90. The same thing, same price that you would pay for buying it from. Yep. Any additional questions before we keep showing some more things? I, I have a quick question. So on my Kiko chat window that I'm looking at, I'm seeing a couple notices flash up and then disappear very quickly. It's a green, a green marker said reconnecting or something like that. Yes, over here, when the notepad is reconnecting, it'll say reconnecting. It, it depends on a variety of factors. I think internet connection could be one of them. I, I don't know that I think if it was the site having a problem, we would all see it. So okay. if you also open this tool in a new tab, so down here, you can open the tool in a new window if you want the full screen. Mm -hmm. And then when you come back, it's gonna have that, it's a, a different message. You can only have it open in one tab at the same time. So if force reconnect, and that reconnects me to this one. Okay. And thank you. A more robust tool would be Google Docs. So this is Etherpad, it's an open source tool and it's ready right out of the box and you can go down to room 25 and it's already set there for you. So it's easy to create an open space like this. And then if, if you want to 
do other things like you want people to be able to put pictures in there. Let's say we want that. We're going to put an example Google Doc instead. Uh, sorry, Lucas, to interrupt. Hi. Yeah. But does this Hi, mean if, if um, in your standard KikoChat meeting, um, there is the option to use the embedded Etherpad? And if you go for the embedded Etherpad, it will automatically assign the pad to each breakout room? That's correct, Ruth. It's already set with the Etherpad. Okay. And can you alternatively also ask, is, do you have a similar option for Google Docs or other embedded tools? Yes. Let's, yeah? Okay. So first, let's uh, embed a Google Doc here. I, I'm going to find an example. Google Doc like this. Example Google Doc. So when you're in Google, you would set it to share with anybody who has the link. Or if you want it to be restricted to just seven people that are administrators, make them edit it. They have the ability to edit, but everybody else has the ability to view. It's whatever security you want for Google Docs, you put, you change here. And then when you, you take the link and we're gonna put it into Kiko Chat, I click edit. And the people that see edit would be the person that created the event and also anyone else that I gave edit access mm -hmm. to. This is the topic and the description, the start time. We're going to go here, customize your main space and breakouts. And online tools for the main event and each breakout. If I put, just paste that Google Doc link right there, then it's going to show in the main room. I'm going to go move it down one. So now it's going to be at room one instead of room two. And I'm going to get a second type. I'm going to get a Google drawing. And I'm going to paste that in the next room. So this is main room. This is breakout room one, breakout room two. Just paste the link in. But it wouldn't give you numbers for each breakout room. In, in the in the window where you just pasted the link in. So you basically you have to count the lines. It doesn't yep. show you, but you can actually put them in if you like. It'll help. It'll probably be helpful. We would ignore a number if you did this. One colon, two colon. So that's an easy way for you to keep track. Mm. And there's also a spreadsheet that we have for you that helps you keep track. I can show that. Mm -hmm. Some some event I created out of 200 Google documents. So and there were multiple Google documents per page. Let's take a quick look here just to finish this thought. I'm in room one. I see the Google document. I go to room two and we see Google draw. Everybody can move the post-its around. Hmm. Ruth, did you have a, a follow-up question on this? It's, um, it's a great idea to do it like that. It's a, <laughs> I'm silent because I'm delighted. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> <laughs> it's just amazing. <laughs> it's Denise. awesome, Lucas. It's absolutely awesome. Yeah. And it looks so simple. Is it so simple because you're the magician or it is just simple? No, it's... it's it is, huh? Ah. Yes, Lucas. I'll sh I'll sh <laughs> <laughs> Lucas, I have a question. So if you're doing um, breakout sessions like a normal open space where you have a marketplace, and yes. you have multiple rooms and multiple times. So obviously mm. room one, room two, room three would be your multiple rooms. Mm. How do you do multiple times? So you have an option here as the facilitator to say, do I want to reuse the room for session two and session three? Or do I want a new room down at the bottom for session two and session three? So you could do either. Let's. There's yeah, so much fun things to talk about when we talk about open space. So I'm going to go back to the main room. And so we have these topics here. I just copy the topics. Remember, I deleted them when I was editing the event intentionally. I deleted them. But let's say we've got these topics for session one. Click copy and set topics for breakout rooms. Paste them in. Now, any rooms that don't have a topic are going to be hidden. They're not deleted. They're just hidden. Let's say it's now time to talk about apple, banana, strawberry. And now we're talking about session two. So it's 10 a.m. You can put them down at the bottom or you can replace them. So if I want to replace them, I'll click admin controls and then 
Well, first, I'm just going to put them at the bottom because it's just a little. So I just paste them down at the bottom. Maybe you're going to do this 10 a.m. And you'd put 9 a.m. up here. Awesome. Because online, we don't have to reuse the same physical room. Just create That's another great. Room. So you could set up your whole marketplace at the beginning in the opening circle or opening um, of, the, of the call. And then um, people can move around throughout the whole event That's on exactly their own right. and then come back to the closing. That's exactly right. I think uh, I'll, we'll put the title opening session up here at the main room is one thing that's helpful and we'll click edit and customize your main space and breakouts add a discussion topic for the main space opening and closing circle or you could type in whatever you like and that makes it a bit more clear or you could say welcome exclamation point start here mm -hmm. you can have rooms that are prepared but just hidden so mm -hmm. click edit, show hide. So I can, I can hide room number three or room number three and four. So we go back in here. So rooms three and four are now hidden for whatever reason. Uh, maybe these are special spaces, a meditation room that's only open at this hour. On the topic of Marketplace, let's show you some examples of open spaces that have happened. Six hundred and eighty five participants. You could decorate your main space, your RSVP page, we call it. It's the purpose of this RSVP page is people to click RSVP right here, click to RSVP and then they, they show up on the list. You can also connect it to Eventbrite. So you can collect money for your event through Eventbrite. They pay you, they don't pay Kiko, and then they get an email from Kiko because Eventbrite is connected to Kiko. If you do, there's, it takes about 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes if you do it the first time uh, to, to try it out. Uh, we have instructions for how to connect to Eventbrite. It's, it's on the edit page. We click participate now, we'll take a look at you land on this event, you can put a PDF here and you can customize a title uh, notification if you want. So we're looking at day one agenda. This is an open space. So cut fill is the name of the event, agenda for day one, session one, space A, B, C, D. Here's the titles and the people who wrote them. And then down below session two, session three. So the neat thing here is you just copy and paste like this into this part where I just showed you breakfast, lunch, dinner. You can just copy paste from there and then they're going to show up here. And in this one, we put in a Google doc for each one. So let's click on this one space V and we have ready there a Google doc where people took notes. People could put their another I can show you how to do multiple tabs across the top. Let me pause here to see if there's any additional questions about Marketplace. So in this case, we use a Google spreadsheet, you know, back up to the main space, and you can use day one agenda and notes, Google spreadsheet. We have day because basic, basically you embedded the spreadsheet um, in the main space. That's exactly right. And then people can uh, right away, as soon as you open the marketplace, people can just um, type in their offer. That's exactly right. Okay, and is there a way to hide um, the, the, the spreadsheet until they really want to offer the marketplace? Or how do I, how do I control what people can see on the screen? We don't have the ability to easily hide but if you had a tech facilitator mm -hmm. so you're doing the facilitation and your tech facilitator your assistant edits the page and then makes you know they paste the link in now you tell everybody okay refresh the page and now you will see 
the marketplace okay. is available. So okay. it, it will require a page refresh. And I that that's an elegant option. Yes, yes. Uh, so sometimes it's a lot to keep track of all of those links. So here we've got all these links. Well, let me show a few other things that are available. You could put in, we showed a PDF. So more PDFs about open space, for example, you can, every facilitator might have a different one. An image for sponsors, even, Oh, yes, please, Ruth. But you can, so basically, if I, when I prepare my open space, I can have um, five tabs, like the ones that you have in this double row. Yes. I can prepare them in advance and then make them visible one by one by clicking on them and telling people to refresh their screen. The way that you make them, everything is true, but the way you make them visible is you edit over here. You say edit, customize your main space, yes. and then here, you just, you paste in, when you paste it in and then hit save, now when they refresh, they'll see it. Let me show you how to make two tabs on the same room. So I will call this one, so this mm -hmm. was draw and this mm -hmm. one was uh, notes. Mm -hmm. You just do, uh, you write the name of it and a colon and then the link. Name of it, then a colon and then the link. So three parts, it's the name of the tab, the okay. colon and the link. You don't have to remember all this because it's written over here. Helpful hint. Okay. And then if I want to put them all in room one, I just put them like this. I just put it on room one with a space in the middle. So now there's nothing in room this one. There's nothing up okay. there except Etherpad by default. So and that's how you how you got the view in this in this um, sample um, um, open space that you just showed to us, where you have several tabs that you can activate, show us. That's correct. And they look like this. So here are our tabs, draw and notes. And when you have the marketplace open in person, it's up there on the wall and people can see it and they can see that it's blank. So to save yourself some trouble online, you can just have it ready and people can look at it and they'll see it's blank. But then you say the marketplace is open. Now, please, this is how you edit. So it's your choice. Do you want to hide the marketplace or do you just want to have it blank like you do in person? I think that all the open spaces I've seen have had it blank and they've just had it as another tab. And this is less work for you to do in the middle of the event when you're focused on there's less to do. And I think that you don't lose anything if you make it available and just, they, they've got to go click on it to get there. So that's what we did with this event. I also, I also want to say that when you have more than a hundred people and you use a Google sheet, you have to make a copy. So one is for editing and one is for viewing. And there's a way that you link the two of them and you just email me and I'll help you with it. But there's a specific formula you use to link the two sheets. So you would tell people go over to the editable one and make your edit. And when you're done editing, go over to the one for viewing. It's because Google Docs has a maximum of something like 75 or 100 people that can be editing one at a time. Otherwise it will push people uh, off the page, uh, off of the Google Docs. They'll see a note that says you can't connect. So that's why we have two copies on these large open space events. And you don't have to memorize that. Uh, you can take a look here. So kikochat.com slash start has a lot of this information. And I'm gonna put this link in the Zoom chat right now. There it is. And helpful resources. Here's the list of tools you can embed, including Google Sheets and Google Docs. So I'm gonna open this up now to show you the different options. Uh, uh, just on the max number of people who are able to work with a Google Doc. Does this mean um, it, um, if it's more than 100 people, they also have problems in viewing the document? Or it's just editing it? Just editing it. Okay. So here's different tools you can embed for taking notes, for drawing, surveys, 
displaying a schedule, live audio video like YouTube, announcement pages like post-it notes, fundraising. This one's fun. I want to show this too. I think um, do the spatial chat. We'll show that here in a moment. If you have a, let's say you have a, an organization that you want to highlight. Maybe it's a sponsor. I'm going to, here's a sponsor booth, Anova Furnishings. We display their website right inside the page. And then people can click join video to talk to Anova Furnishings. So this is their full website. Just copy and paste the link. And then their Instagram. Or maybe they have a PDF that they want to show. Back to the list of tools that you can embed. We'll scroll through a few of them here. So Etherpad is the default. And it's ready for you in all your rooms. If you say 100 rooms, it's, it's ready for you. If someone goes to room 99, it's already there. If you want to put in Google Docs, that is uh, the most popular option. Google Drawings is good. Very simple tool for people to move post-its around. And you could do other exercises in there when you're running workshops. People putting dots on a grid to say you know, high impact, high effort, all different types of things that where you want to take people's ideas and put them on as facilitators, you know different ways to do that. Here's drawings, so more post-its. This is a fun tool, pickles. Whiteboarding with Zeitboard and Groupboard, diagrams.net. Here's some post-its. You could do your bulletin board, your marketplace with post-its, but it's harder because you can't copy paste into Kiko Chat with the post-its some forms, Mentimeter is a powerful survey tool, poll everywhere, Airtable is similar to Google Forms. And with each of these tools, you just set them up over there and you copy and paste it in. Um, can you show video? Yes, let's, uh, that okay. one's coming up here. Here's Google Sheets. This, is, this explains how you link the two, which I was explaining about the editable tab. Sketch is a great way to have a beautiful schedule that's embedded in one of your tabs across the top. So let's see, here's the answer to video. You can put in, you're gonna want the embed link, not just the regular link to YouTube. And this explains how you get that special link from YouTube. Same for Vimeo. Now these could be live or they could be recorded. It doesn't, it could be one or the other. Loom is another one for embedded video and even music with Spotify. And let's get down to networking. This is a fun one. I'll zoom in here so you can see it a little bit better. So Yo Tribe and Spatial Chat. So here we have Yo Tribe embedded on the right-hand side of Kiko Chat. You see the butterflies in the breakout rooms. Now I pop up here as this icon. When I move myself next to this person, then we're both on video here. And if we're done speaking, I can drag myself over here and be on video up here with different people. And it's a different way to have the law of two feet to move yourself. Uh, this another tool, Spatial Chat does the same thing. We have these rooms available. We pay $50 per month to Spatial Chat. You could pay $50 to Spatial Chat if you want, or you can borrow our room for $25. And then there's a, another similar way. It's a video game. You move yourself over to different people, and then you pop up on video together. So it's a lot of different tools. Miro is a popular one that's gonna be embeddable soon, not yet. We have gotten permission from them last week and we have to do a little bit of work to make that possible. Here's an example of some LinkedIn posts in a job fair. So you can use it for things other than open space. This is a job fair where people would go to the NASDAQ room and meet with one person who's going to talk to 20 candidates and then move people to individual breakout rooms inside that Zoom meeting. Each of these has a Zoom meeting. Inside this Zoom meeting, that one person is the host and they say, okay, speak to recruiter one in booth one or breakout room one. 
speak to recruiter two in breakout room two. So a lot of different options. I can pause here for any, any more questions. Sorry, did you say I, I, I didn't get all the tools? Um, how about Padlet? Yes, uh, Padlet's here. Okay, I didn't see it, sorry, yep. There we go. Okay, perfect, thanks. Lucas, how do you, um, you were saying something about when you're sharing your screen, like say you're sharing a Google spreadsheet on your screen and people are typing in like in the marketplace or maybe it's something else they're typing in. Um, you were saying it's a little challenging for people to, to, to be typing in while there's a shared screen. Can you talk yes. more about that? So here, everybody, let's go back to the main room. And this is true regardless of whatever tool we're using. So when I asked you to please write your name here, it's hard for you to do this when you're seeing my screen. So I would show people, all right, everyone, please look for the main room and look for the notes on the right. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. So I'll just stop there for a moment. Then people can go in and edit uh, because when my screen is shared, it takes up the full screen and people might not know how to get out of that. The way to get out of it is in Zoom at the top, it says exit full screen. And I so use- how do how do you see that screen at the same time that you're seeing the, the gallery in whatever form you have it set? So you can, when screen is being shared, that's one thing. And let's talk first about what you could do right now to have both Zoom video and Kiko chat. So I'll share my screen and just to see you can, make it narrow and I'll adjust my screens here for a moment so I can show you. That's actually one of the biggest problems I got with, uh, with the participants, how that they really get it, how to, how to put up with Zoom and Google Doc, for example. I agree. That's exactly the problems we're having too. Is, trying to do. It, oh, Zoom. I wonder. Maybe maybe somebody has some experience. How do how do we explain this to people? I put it in the invitation, a step by step um, explanation how to do it, and still there are so many people that don't get it. I don't yes. I don't know what to do. With with audiences that are not online all the time doing working with different tools, they don't know how to do this. Yep, that's the, that's the point. And I, I've, I was an instructor of adults mm -hmm. in technology on the Microsoft suite of tools for several years. And I know that sometimes people just freeze up. So this is what you want them to do. You want them to get it to halfway and then down here are the notes, up here are the rooms. And then on the right hand side would be Zoom. So you could tell them, well, you can have two screens, but they're not going to have two screens. No, that's. Um, you can also tell them to, to do alt tab like this, mm -hmm. and you can switch between Zoom, but they're not going to do that. So the simplest thing is what you're trying to do is you have them go down to the bottom right. Now, this is really the best thing you could do as a facilitator is don't do this during the event. You do this before the event, the day before, by having a time, one hour in the morning, one hour in the afternoon, mm -hmm. when people can come in for five minutes mm -hmm. and they turn Zoom on, so they make sure that Zoom's working. You get those tech things worked out for people that don't know how to move, that's when you tell them. You tell them when the event is not happening. And then yep. if, they, if they can't figure out how to do that, then that's probably a person who's going to just enjoy being in Zoom and don't look at the notes. I ended up actually doing exactly this with the instruction before before the event and hoping that people would show up. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks. I, I just tried to make my Kiko um, um, screen smaller, but I can't figure out how to make it smaller. <laughs> Try, well, let me stop sharing for a moment. And then yeah. now, now I think you can do it. it when, when sharing is happening, it takes up the whole 
screen and you have to go to the very top, hit the drop down menu and say, not full screen, exit full screen. So here, I think it's easier now to move Zoom to half the page and Kiko Chat to half the page. No, but I've, I, I'm not on full screen with the screen with Zoom. Mm -hmm. But um, um, if I move my cursor towards the Kiko, the real Kiko site, mm -hmm. towards the bottom line, it seems not to connect. Try the, not to offer me any option to, to change the size. Try a different corner. It's possible that the bottom corner is not visible. It could be far lower. So maybe the top right, top left. Yeah, it seems to be odd because the live chat window also has sort of almost disappeared and I can't maneuver it. I think that that could be what's happening is that the whole browser window is a little bit below. So try going to the top or just the side. You don't necessarily need the bottom. If you put your mouse over the, the right hand side, your arrow should be look, look like this, a double headed arrow. And if the right side doesn't work, try the left side. Mm -hmm. No, no success so far, but I, um, I've got it opened in um, Firefox, I think. Is this an issue? We would I need a different browser? No, no. I'm on I, Firefox. It, it's just um, resizing the window is related to, it, it's not related to Kiko since Kiko's in the window. So, moving your mouse to one of the corners or one of the sides mm -hmm. until it's an arrow that's like double two arrows like this. No, it's not. My cursor is not impressed, impressible <laughs> right now. Okay. Well, we can, we can test that out afterwards. Let's, mm, okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's see, additional questions that we can discuss. Anybody have more questions? I'm wondering if you're using, like if you're Google, using Google Spreadsheet as your marketplace and you have it embedded, can people also go into the Google Drive and write it? Or is it, so is it writable in two places at that point or is it only writable in Kiko Chat at that point? You can write on it outside of Kiko Chat too. If we go over here to the, this is the event that had Google Sheets as its agenda wall. And we'll click day one agenda and notes. And I can edit it. Well, this one, my, this is view only. So if I scroll down, you can open the tool in a new window. You could do this with any tool, just because sometimes it's possible that the tool is not visible for someone's browser. If they have certain privacy settings that don't let sites talk to each other, we give them this button. You can open the tool in a new window and then this is like editing it on Google Drive, directly on a Google Drive link. Okay, so if you give them the link separately, or you give them the link mm -hmm. in maybe in the notes or something, and you have the tab, they can open it both places. That's right, it, it'll be the same document, so they can make an edit here and it's gonna be visible in Kiko Chat because it's the same document. Got it. I have a question. Um, can you can you send a message from the main space to all rooms simultaneously? Yes, you can do that here with admin controls. We showed how to click set topics for breakout rooms. That's how we. Uh, oh, notify breakout rooms. Thanks. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I'll, let's see. I'll do it in our event over here. Mm -hmm. Admin controls notify, and so you should experience it. Mm -hmm. If you're in Zoom, you'll hear it, yep. but you, you may not see it. So at least you know something else is going on. Then you could view all the notes at the same time. This is helpful for facilitators. There's the main room notes. And then below that, here's our Google Doc. And then our Post-its and then Room two notes. 
What happens to all these notes after the session? So is there a way to archive all of it so that it can be shared with the full group afterwards? Yes. So Kiko Chat does not hide the notes at when the event is over. Everything remains in place. So you have some options here. These notepads can be downloaded in different formats, Etherpad or HTML or plain text. You can also copy and paste into a, a Google Doc. So maybe you would go here and go into each Etherpad, copy it and put it into a Google Doc or something else. So in this event, cut fill, the book of proceedings is, my wife made it, she's a landscape architect. So I'm gonna go show you, she made a three volume book of proceedings and it's more than would normally be done. It's because these were landscape architects. So they wanted to make it beautiful. And, and she made it like a book. That I don't know how many people normally do something like this, but it's just, I mean, you, you have everything and you can really, these are, there, this event before the open space, there were some panelists, so. Mm. You see, you spent a long time doing this. So I, I hesitate to show it because I don't recommend that anyone thinks that this is necessary, but you, you have all the, here's all the chat from Zoom. And I guess you could, I'll share the link if anyone wants to explore it, cutfill.kikochat.com. I'll put it in the chat. Is she using InDesign or what is she using to make the book? InDesign, yes. Okay, thank you. And if you have all of your pages as Google Docs, they live as long as the Google Doc is alive. It's, uh, it's at that same link. So you would just well, here's one more thing. Let's see. On, on day two, actually here. So the simplest thing we did, and this was during the event, we took all the notes pages and all the links and just put them here. So we, this was the original agenda wall. And so you could share out, the simplest thing you could do is you share out you put in a new column here that says, here are the notes pages. So after people move to the breakouts, here are the notes pages. And you just share this link to this document and people can say, I, after the event's over, they wanna go back to session two, space H, there's the link for them. And you don't need to do any additional work. It's, here's the link. The way that we tracked all these links, there were 200 Google Docs in this event with over 100 breakout rooms in two days. It was more complex than an open space needs to be, but we had an organizing team of five people. Heidi Nobantu Saul was an open space facilitator. She's wonderful. And we, we got paid for this event. We charged somewhere else like, 20 to $50 per person, 600 people. And then there were sponsorships, of something like 15 to $20,000. So we had the time to put, put a lot of time into this event. And I'll show the tool that we used for tracking all the Google Docs. Here's the link, a link tracker for the career fair. I have this one handy. Now I know that this looks chaotic, but it takes a moment to get oriented. Here we have the list of rooms. These are all the companies that had a different booth. And then we can ignore this column for a moment. This is what you end up pasting into Kiko Chat, and it's automatically created for you from all of these. So here I am in the Comcast lobby 
I have a tab for Comcast. Let me say this, this is the Comcast breakout room. I have one tab named Comcast Lobby and it goes to a notes link. I have another tab to submit your resume. It goes to this Google form. I have another tab for YouTube. So you're, you're putting the tab names down here and then the links down here. And that's all you do in the spreadsheet. You fill in the room names, the tab names, and then all of these live outside of Kiko Chat so that you have access to them. You have all the Google Docs handy. And then you just copy this column and paste it into where we had edit event. I'll go ahead and do that so you can see it show up here. So I'm copying this green column. And I know this is a bit intimidating, but if you were doing this yourself, you'd say, okay, I, I kind of get it. Customize your main space. This is where we put in these two links. But now if I just paste all of that in, I just paste all of it in at the same time. And now all of your rooms are gonna change. So here in the main room, you've got this notes document. In the next room, you've got the YouTube information for NASDAQ. So we just changed out the entire event with one copy paste. And the advantage of doing that is you can set up here day one, day two, day three. You could do that before your event begins. And then when it's time at the end of day one, just copy paste, put it all in. And you're, it's like changing out your entire conference center. I'm gonna put back what we had here so that people aren't confused if they come back to this event. So I know that's a bit intimidating, but that's the hardest thing on Kiko Chat. Okay, but I'm still at the very beginning of slowly building up some sort of idea about Kiko. So I have a very basic question. There is this edit option on the top of the page next to intro to Kiko Chat, mm -hmm. and you've got the, the tab admin controls. Mm -hmm. um, how are the two different and why are they separate? These are things that you're right, they are very similar, but these are things you might want to use during an event, such as notifying the breakout tables, which you heard that noise, or maybe I want a quick link to view all the notes. That was this tab here to view all the notes for all the pages. Um, these are other things you might want here to set a timer, 30 minutes. So people at all the different rooms okay. can see a timer. Nothing happens when the timer expires. So maybe that's when you want to send out a notification to everyone say, okay, time has, is over. Please come back to the main room. Some facilitators like to use a chime. Other facilitators like to just let people, whenever it starts, it starts. Whenever it ends, it ends. Uh, so it, whichever your style is, that why, that's what, why we don't do anything when the timer, it's just the timer goes to zero. And hopefully people know. Uh, this one's helpful. View data about when people joined the meeting. You can see uh, this. Uh, sorry, Lucas, does this mean if people decide to stay in their breakout, I cannot make them come back? That's right. You would need a tech assistant to go into the room and say, please come back to the main room. <laughs> it's just like okay. real life. If they're over okay. there and they want to stay there, then you have to drag them. <laughs> in, in, in Zoom, you have Zoom yes. breakouts where you can push and pull people inside Zoom. Yes. In Kiko, the, the people are here, here, here. Uh, you can't bring them back. You can only invite them back. Okay, so good, good to know about this difference. Um, I don't know if I misunderstood something, but you said you need a tech host to go into the room to tell them to come back. You can do that yourself. Absolutely, you can do wow, that Wow, okay, yourself. yeah, yes. sure, sure. Okay, just didn't know if, uh, okay. yeah. The okay, reason I advise having a, an assistant is so that you can hold the space. Of course. I, in the main room. I, yeah, I'm sure. Yep. I just didn't know if it's a technical reason or, or if it, yep, thanks. Okay, so this is the, the admin controls contains all the, the most urgently needed um, yes. yeah, options um, to, to host the conversation. And the edit function. This is where you edit or create your event. Uh, okay. Put in the title, the description, the start time. 
the number of people. This just okay. lets us know if it's going to be a thousand person event. We want to prepare for that. It doesn't affect billing. Do you want it to be hidden or not in your circle? So this is a Kiko chat circle. And I'll talk about that in a moment. Some other settings that are helpful. We talked about many of these. Security, if you want to restrict access to just people, put them on the access list like that. Okay. You can have Kiko chat send an invitation to Sally if you want. When you put people on the access list, we don't send an invitation. We let you send the invitation either by using this tool or maybe you're using Constant Contact or MailChimp or another tool to communicate with your people. Now anyone who's not on the access list will not be able to get into the event. Here is where you can grant people access to see this edit page. You can make them the assistant administrator. So it's not just access to the event, but assistant administrator. Here you can make people Zoom host. So you can give everyone the ability to be the Zoom host if you trust everybody. Or Sally at example.com. She can be a Zoom host in any of the rooms. She will have admin controls join video as host. So if let's go back to that here in admin controls join video as host. That's how I had to come in today to be able to record or to mute someone or to remove someone. Is there at, 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 uh, some overview anywhere in Kiko that outlines who is allowed to, to do what with which um, depending whether you're an admin, a host, a co-host? There is not just, just what we have here. If you, if you okay. look into any of these, it'll say okay. helpful hints and okay fine lucas um can you please show the um, the line where the the topic um assigning participants to breakout rooms or okay. or the or to rooms or something that was in the, in the administration there uh assign people to breakout yeah so let's say we want three people per table or per room i, okay. I said table the same click save and now your names are here okay um so, but you can if you have a list uh excel um mm -hmm. a spreadsheet with 150 people and i would like to put them into rooms before the meeting mm -hmm. and assign um a, a host to each of the rooms and then switch that again after maybe an hour make a new mixture of people in the, in, in the rooms? The same way I did this. I copied these. You copy, click admin controls, and okay. save topics. These okay. are the topics. I saw the names are yep. the topics. Okay, and I see. And then they enter the room by themselves. I see. Okay, got That's it. That's right. So Thanks. you would enter the room by mm -hmm. yourself. Yep, mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. And we are, remember we're hiding two rooms from yep. half an hour ago. That's why two rooms are hidden. Mm -hmm. Can you tell um, where your pricing is or how do I, or do you email us something? How are Absolutely. you? Absolutely. The pricing is on the homepage. So. Okay. I'll find it then. I, 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 I'm going to, this is a very important question. So I'm going to put the link here. Kikochat.com slash start. And then we have a link to the pricing calculator, our homepage. So we'll take a look at the pricing calculator and other things on this page. You can test out different events. You can create your own event. You can create events for free when you're testing. And it, this link will explain how to do that. Okay. And the list of tools you can embed into Kiko is here, which we had looked at. So let's take a look at pricing. It's a dollar it was, per day per person. Sorry, it was kikochat.com slash start it or start S T A R T. Oh, just start. Okay. Start just S T A R T. Yeah. 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 And here we could do full service events, but most of the events on Kiko chat are run by other people. Mm -hmm. Oh, more than 90%. A four hour workshop. 
on one day is $3.40 per person. So we charge a dollar per day plus one cent per minute per person. Dollar per day per person and a penny per minute per person or 60 cents per hour. So if the, you have 100 people, it stays the same $3.40 per person, just the total cost will change. So change the hours, change the days. This will be the total hours across all days of your event. So if it's a two hour, if it's a four hour event for two days, then it would be eight hours. We get billed half a cent per minute per person mm -hmm. by Zoom. So we charge you one cent per minute per person. Okay. But if I mean uh, to set to design the event and set it up, uh, we need access uh, before the real event. So is this included in the rate or is this an additional fee? So say the live event takes half a day. Mm -hmm. There would be another, I don't know, three days perhaps to get familiar um, with Kiko and to the design thing. All of that is free. So the only time we charge you is when you, you join video. When you click the green button. And the first $10 is free. So you can test it out with your colleagues. I'm gonna stay here and answer some more questions. I'm gonna tell the next meeting that uh, I'm gonna be a little bit delayed. Could you mention what the uh, circle is and how that differs from an event? And the gardens. Okay, yeah. great. I'm gonna pause the recording here for a moment and just tell that other person I'll be there a little bit later. We give an hour free support for any event. So that's what I'm doing with this other facilitator to help them with their event. Let's look at the event that we're in today. It was called free training intro to Kiko chat. And if we look at the RSVP page, this is where you RSVP would and it says learn about Kiko chat. So Kiko, learn about Kiko chat is the name of the circle. A circle is something that is a place for a group of people to gather on Kiko chat. So you can have many different events for the same group. A circle has a calendar and a member directory. Now let's take a look at the member directory and it becomes clear a circle is for a group of people. So you can see where people are coming from. Click on their profile to learn more about them. Here's the calendar of events for this circle. Uh, document library of articles and links and files. So our goal, we make the circles free so that you want to host more events on Kiko chat. Here's all these resources inside this circle. You can create a circle here. KikoChat.com slash start will take you to the getting started page. And this is the quick start guide for creating a circle. So basically the circle is an, um, is an option independent of a live meeting using Kiko chat. That's exactly right. If we take a look at menu and calendar, each of these are events on Kiko chat. Mm -hmm. They all exist in this circle. And every Monday morning you get a newsletter that says, here are the events for the next three weeks. Okay. The goal is to build an online community. So sometimes for a workshop, it's a one-time workshop. You don't need a circle because the people aren't coming back. But maybe you could start thinking differently and say, well, I have mm -hmm. people who came to workshop one. 
And workshop two, maybe I want to give them something else and charge them for a different event where I connect the alumni from different workshops together. Or maybe it's free and the alumni from different workshops are now talking with each other about six months after your workshop is over, what did they learn? How are they applying it? So you can have a different mm -hmm. level of events that way. Okay. Because so if you want to, to um, build a network, for example, which we will do with our open space event because it's actually a kickoff of uh, hopefully a network of, of researchers and uh, business people who work on the same issue. So we could use alternatively to a LinkedIn group or whatever, we could use this, the Kiko chat circle function. Yes. To offer them a space to connect and exchange information. That's right. And you can give them the option to add an event. So I added these events, but maybe you mm -hmm. want them to say, and it's not something that you're creating, but it's a happy hour on Thursday. And it's only for whomever is available. It's not a big deal. It's not a conference. But every week someone says, mm -hmm. I've got a problem. I need to talk about this on Tuesday at noon. And maybe three or four people out of 100 will join. And if you have a, it builds momentum over time for everybody to be able to schedule their own event. They don't need a Zoom account because it's provided here by your organization. Mm -hmm. They don't have to have a Zoom Pro account. So this makes it easy for anyone in the group to just schedule a meeting. And it's, it's a meeting just like all of these. I'll go to any of them. You, you saw the basic a picture, uh, butterflies, and mm -hmm. they can go to the 10 rooms. And if they want, they can edit it just like you can edit any event. They have the ether pad ready to go. One more question about the invitation process. You do that via Kiko chat as well. You don't, you don't mail just a link or, or something, but it's, it's, um, you set the whole thing up in Kiko chat and you invite the people or they um, subscribe to the event in Kiko chat. You have many different options. Okay. So I've got this help page to explain the different options. So you can create the event on Kiko chat. And then the simple way is copy the link and send it to people in an email from your email. You can also have Kiko chat send the invitation. I'll put this link into. Did I find this with um, Kiko chat? slash start? Uh, yes. Okay, good. Then I'll find it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Great. You're welcome. It's in the Great. Zoom chat. Yep. Perfect. All right. Well, we, we have all these open office hours. Oh, this is the, the raw data. We show you you know, it's not in a beautiful format, but it tells you for, for the event that we have right now, you see everybody joined space zero. That's the main space. And one person came and left. And it, this also tells you, we don't give you their email address. We, that's all private information. We have a strict privacy policy. If you want people's email address, then you must have them register with you on Eventbrite or some other tool and then copy the emails into Kiko chat. So this just shows when people entered and left. And this is helpful if you wanna do an analysis for the client to see how many people attended and which rooms did they go to. Mm -hmm. I'll show one more beautiful one that just finished this weekend. So it's a fashion show and they customize the colors. They put in a PDF here to show, correction, this is an image to show what's happening. Um, it's just, I like how they designed they had a graphic designer do all the work. So you can see it could be simple or it could be intricate. It's up to you. And people are coming back even though the event is over. They had these different shops. So you can embed the web page of that organization or that shop. This is actually a custom built page. One of the staff members built this page. I gave him some assistance. 
So here are, it's a shopping cart. Click on this and it opens, make a buy it. This is off of Kiko Chat. This is the company's website. So those are some fashion shops. They had a fashion show, which you can, you can watch it. And their sponsors. So all these spaces are customizable and the fun part is thinking about what you wanna put in them. Here they had panel discussions. And now that it's over, you go back into here and this is YouTube recording, correction, a Zoom recording put onto YouTube in case people missed it. These were the people that were in the discussion. Um, Lucas, um, just one more question about the circle option. Yes. Um, how much would you charge for that? Or is it included also, or how does this work? Circles are free because we charge money for events. And if you have circles, you will have more events, probably. Okay. And it okay. doesn't cost us much, so we just make it available for free. And what you, is the, yeah? You can actually charge people if you want to, to, uh. to, to join your circle. So the, there's a payment option where you say, if you want to join the circle, it's $5 a month. Mm -hmm. Or what, and then you, you get the money for that. Okay. As long as you pay us for the events. Yeah. Um, and the gardens, how does the gardens relate to, to um, the, the event option? Okay, here is our learn about Kiko Chat Circle. And your calendar is a calendar of events. And it's an event just like this free training that we're in right now. A garden, the gardens is a place where it's always open. Uh, let's open it up. So here's the gardens. It's just the picture in the background. You could change the picture. So you think of it as a place. It's kind of like the gardens outside of your home. If you go down the street to a park to see the gardens in the park, you don't know who you're going to meet there. And you have encounters with your neighbors and you can talk about whatever, it's impromptu gathering. So kinds of events that you might have in the gardens would be a lunch or a happy hour. Um, it's informal and light and you have multiple gardens here. So if there's too many people in, you just click this, it launches Zoom. If there's too many people and you wanna have a, top, a discussion about some other topic, let's go over to butterfly space number three. It says cooking, uh, but I can go in and I can change it. I'm gonna I'll call it whatever you like, garden number six cooking. I okay. want to talk about knitting. So okay. the gardens is like the default um, meeting place embedded in the circle. That's exactly right. Okay. But you can have, um, because um, you have perhaps, I don't know, a couple of hundred circles parallel to each other because they have mm -hmm. different people run different circles. Mm -hmm. So it's called the gardens in all circles, and but they are used um, independently of each other's. That's correct. Each so if I start a circle, the gardens will be only access, accessible to the circle members of my circle. That's correct. And you can change the name of it from gardens to something else. So in the open space vernacular, I'm guessing the gardens are like the spontaneous places where people encounter each other. Like if you were at a retreat center, it might be on the nature trails or it might be in the courtyard or whatever. It's just the places where un unscheduled kind of spontaneous occurrences can happen? Yes, Alana, and taking a look at the fashion show, instead of having the garden separate, they just created some garden spaces. They literally called them that. So we'll click over to garden number two, and they have a photo here that looks like a garden. And you could put anything you want here, a photo or not, but th these are instructions for how to join the garden. Join the gardens, click join video. So yeah, this way people can just easily get down. These gardens can be at the bottom or all the way at the top. You can ch decide the order of your rooms. And then this way they don't have to leave the page because the default gardens for your circle happen on a different page.
Lucas, is the video of our or of our discussion today going to be available for us so that if we have tech people or other people, they can watch it too? Yes, you will receive an email with it and also at this link where we are here, I'm going to paste it in and it will display here. So you'll be able to get it either way if you just return to this event. Thank you so much for this. It's just, it's just amazing. I'm so appreciative of your creation of this and also yes, like having the brain of an open space facilitator and thinking mm -hmm. about this. I love it. Thank you so much, Lucas. It, it was awesome. The tool is awesome. The whole session was awesome. Thank you so much, Lucas. It was really, my head is so full and so inspired and, and thinking of all the things or the future events I want to do with Kiko Chat, but I first have to sort it all out and I'm sure I'm going to watch the session again. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. We'll be You're back welcome. for another intro session probably. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> okay. You're very welcome. And uh, my email address is at uh, kikochat.com slash start and also my phone number there. So you I, this, is the, this is the most important page <laughs> for the whole stuff is kiko, kikochat.com slash start. Yes. I, I got this. <laughs> I've got a final question, okay, thank you. Lucas. Yes. You, okay, you I have anger. to leave. Sorry. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. But, bye -bye. but bye. I think it's a short one. Yes, Ruth. I just, I just confused myself a little bit. So there is this view of now you and me, right? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, if I, um, 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 there is this other view, free training intro to Kiko Chat uh, mm -hmm. with the open etherpad um, and mm -hmm. the, the two visible breakout rooms and the main room. Mm -hmm. And I entered the lunch room too. Mm -hmm. So I can see it, um, the picture that you put for this room plus the etherpad. Mm -hmm. But how come that I still can hear you and view the two of us in this other open meeting? Are we yes. in the in the main room? And we are. And talking, I have not. We yeah? are talking in the main room, but you're looking in the other room. So you can look, 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 and you find the room that you want to go to, and then you say, "Okay, now I'm going to leave the main room, okay. Zoom, and then I'm going to end." So all you have to do is when you get to that other room. Yeah, the join video for room two. Yes, and you, you have an option here. First, you can close Zoom and then click join video over there. Or mm -hmm. you can click join video over there and there's a pop-up and Zoom is going to say, you're already yeah. in one meeting. Do you want to leave yeah. that and go to the other? But for some people, that pop-up doesn't happen. So the simplest thing we say for participants is three steps. Number one, leave Zoom. Okay. Number two, go somewhere else. And number three, join Zoom over there. So leave Zoom, okay. go somewhere else, and join Zoom over there. So the short way would be just um, hit the green button, join video, and if it doesn't work, um, leave the main meeting and then join new one. That's right. And how about okay. we test that out together? So I'm going to end the recording here, and then you and I can try. We'll jump to another room, and you can see what it's like. For everybody watching the recording, you can reach me at lucas at kikochat.com. And also phone number is at 917-528-1831, area code one, uh, area code one, country code one in the United States. You can also re reach me at WhatsApp at that same phone number. I look forward to hearing from you. Look forward to see what you do online. <laughs>